Welcome on into the Wolverine TV. Clayton Safey here with Chris Ballas. A lot to get to this week, specifically on the basketball front. Obviously, the Michigan basketball roster is now set with Hunter Dickinson and Devontae Jones both deciding to return to college. So we kind of have all of that set. The freshmen are in town. We talked a little bit about that last week, but uh, another week has gone by of some of those voluntary workouts, coaches being able to be involved with a number of those. Uh, and then we'll talk basketball recruiting, which is kind of ongoing here throughout the live period in July. Uh, we will be down in Atlanta. I will be down in Atlanta to see Doug McDaniel, Michigan point guard commit, uh, Jet Howard, shooting guard target commit, kind of. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about recruiting as well. And Michigan obviously just hosted uh, some visitors as well. But let's start with Hunter Dickinson, Devontae Jones, both deciding uh, a couple days before for Devontae Jones, the day before the deadline for Hunter Dickinson, that they're coming back to school. They're in Ann Arbor now, and uh, this team is just ready to go. They're they're locked and loaded. Yeah, and it, you know what? There was really not a whole lot of doubt after Hunter Dickinson did not get invited to the NBA Combine that he was going to be coming back. And he kind of let that slip, Clay, in his interview the other night. And he said, you know, well, I was going to work out for a couple of other teams, but once I didn't get that Combine invite, then I really kind of flipped – back to going to Michigan, going back to Michigan. But you know what? I think he, there was a little drama involved there. You know, the big fella <laughs> likes the, uh, I wouldn't say he likes the attention, but he likes to keep it interesting. And uh, man, is he a great interview. And uh, this is going to be his last year. There's no question about it. And I feel uh, bad to say that, but it is. It's just a fact of life. He's a little bit older. Uh, I think that he knows, and even NBA scouts told him that he's going to be a first-round pick next year if he does everything right. They said you can only play yourself out of the first round, you know, and that's probably not going to happen. They expect him to really pick it up. So uh, love this kid and what he brings, uh, and not just in terms of skill, but in, in energy and uh, in his leadership. He's a sophomore leader. Uh, you look at Eli Brooks, and he's going to be the guy, but they love they love Hunter Dickinson in that role as well. So huge. And then Devontae Jones, same thing. After that first game, man, I was a little worried. 15 points, man, and he looked pretty good. Uh, he's going to be probably the primary point guard on this team. We've spoken to several people in the last few days who have said the same. So uh, you're going to see him. You're going to see Frankie Collins, the true freshman in there. You're going to see Eli Brooks playing off the ball. I think Zeb Jackson will be playing a little bit more off the ball. But, man, having those two guys there, uh, somebody who was actually – in the building said this team is absolutely loaded and that's without caleb houston man who's playing for for the canadian team in, in the fiba championships under at the u19s so gonna be a lot of fun to watch this fall clay this winter yeah no doubt about it when, when you talk about Devonte jones i think that'll be interesting to see exactly how much he evolves we've seen him well you know i didn't really watch close didn't really know who he was but mm -hmm. you know looking back at film and looking at his stats he, he played a lot of point guard two years ago Played more off the ball last year, and you know led uh, you know his team in scoring, and was their primary guy, and that was kind of out, out of necessity. They had a pretty good point guard, move him off the ball, so he's going to be on the ball though now uh, at Michigan. He can score, but you know he's going to be able to he's going to have to be able to pass. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see if he can get up to speed, running the pick and roll, doing all the things that Jawan Howard likes his point guard to do. Um, doesn't hurt that he has weapons around him. You mentioned Caleb Houston, Eli Brooks, all these guys. He can dump it down to Hunter Dickinson if he ever gets stuck, right? So, yeah. uh, and Brandon Johns as well. So, uh, there's plenty of options there. But when you look at the guards, I guess I'm kind of looking up and down this roster, and I say it'll be interesting because Zeb Jackson is going to have a shot as kind of a combo guard type. Eli Brooks can run the point when you need him to. We saw that last year. We've seen it the last couple of years. Um, and then Kobe Bufkin. Uh, is another guy who is impressing early, as we kind of talked about uh, a little bit last week, and you had him one of your updates, that Kobe Bufkin's looking really, really good uh, as a two-guard type. I think there's an odd man out there between Frankie Collins, Zeb Jackson, and Kobe Bufkin, depending on who emerges. Uh, how do you see the guards playing out? I think that's one of the more interesting storylines. Yeah, speaking to people close to the team, Frankie Collins is probably going to be your backup point guard. And, and some people have said, he, you know, they weren't here for Xavier Simpson's first year, but they said, you know, he's probably off to the same kind of start that Xavier Simpson was, was, okay, you know, is this, he can't shoot the ball very well still. You know, we've seen that he, he has made some shots, but uh, that's not an area where he's excelled in the early going. So they're going to need him to step that up if he's going to be that score first, or not score first, but scoring able point guard. And uh, that's something that he's going to have to show. So Devontae Jones, the one thing that uh, Phil Martelli, assistant coach, told me the other day, he said, 
Zeb Jackson, nobody has worked harder in the offseason. They would love to see this kid take the next step and that he's really improved. So, man, he's one of those kids. When you get an influx of talent like that, it tends to bring out the best in you, man, because you understand and you're seeing, hey, if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to play here, man, I'm going to have to up my game. Now, Zeb had a really nice tournament game in the first game of the NCAA tournament, hit a couple of shots. Uh, he's smooth. I, I like him. I love him as a teammate. Uh, he is one of those kids that when they bring in recruits, he's the guy that is helping host them because of his personality and how much he loves Michigan. I really would love to see him thrive. But like you said, man, there's one ball, right? So, and there's going to be, there are guys that are certainly going to play. You know, we know who the starting five are. I think Devontae Jones is going to be one of those. By the way, he still has to, hasn't seen the court yet. He's still uh, getting some paperwork cleared. But at the same time, I think there is a role for Zeb Jackson if he goes out and gets it. Frankie Collins will play. This could be a 9-10 deep team, at least at the beginning of the year. And then it's up to those guys to kind of prove themselves and that they still belong in that lineup. So uh, Kobe Bufkin, man, smooth is the word that we got from him. Uh, Eli Brooks loves him. We're going to have more on this in an article coming at the Wolverine.com on the fort. So uh, if you missed it, uh, take a look at it. But some great stuff, man. This this roster is absolutely loaded. Now it's a matter of getting them to mesh the way that last year's team did, Clay, because we all know how far that goes and how close they were last year. You're absolutely right about this. All the talk about the number one recruiting class coming in, going back to Zeb Jackson, where, okay, you're sitting there. It's like, well, I, you know, I'm a talented guy too. Uh, mm-hmm. He was talking with Brian Bush a couple weeks ago on the Defend the Block podcast, and he was saying – uh, and, and Brian Bush was like, man, tell me about these workouts I hear about that you're in the gym at 5, 6 in the morning and you're out of the gym, you're walking out as other guys are walking in because you're already done and you're ready to get on with the rest of your day. And then I think he comes back for more later on in the day. Uh, and he's like, that's just how I was how I was brought up. That's what we did at Montverde, which, by the way, Caleb Houston was doing the same thing down there, uh, Montverde Academy down in, in Florida. So, you know, don't forget about Zeb Jackson. It will be uh, one, you know. Get those competitive juices flowing. It'll be interesting. Um, what else are you hearing on the freshmen? Because uh, these guys are here, as you mentioned. Caleb Houston not in town yet, but he's it's not like he's not playing basketball. He's over there doing pretty pretty well. I had a double double yesterday, as we speak, uh, for Team Canada. So he's doing what he's doing. The rest of the guys are in town, starting to you know build that bond. Yeah, a quiet group is how it was described, and that's not. The first thing that you want to hear, right? You want to hear, you know, it's not like the Fab Five coming in here and challenging right, right. The, the seniors and saying us against y'all. I remember is what. Give me uh, your, give me your big saying. shorts so it can be, so I can have these. Exactly, bags. yeah. And you got Chris Setter or somebody out there wearing <laughs> Bill Lambeer types, you know. But um, it's not these guys coming in with all of this uh, bragging and everything else. These guys are a little bit quiet. So uh, it's kind of what we saw from these guys at. When they were in high school, Musa Diabate is a long, long way to go on offense. Everybody's talking about he's going to be a one and done. He's got to prove that he can can shoot the ball a little bit. That's an area that he's struggled in high school and, you know, early on at Michigan. He's going to be a great player. It's only a matter of time. Uh, he's got a great knowledge of the game and just the willingness to improve like all these other guys. So we talked about Buffkin. Isaiah Barnes can stroke it. Uh, this is a kid that came in might have been a little bit shell-shocked man because there's a lot of talent there you know and he was a little bit lower rated than some of the other guys but he's shooting the ball very well in the early going um had a really good week this week from what we understand so um the one guy man that uh that brings a smile to their face is will chatter and he's kind of the overlooked guy and when everybody talks about this recruiting class you know he's kind of like oh there's all these guys and then there's will chatter uh uh-uh. uh, he's going to be in, in the mix and he's going to have the potential for a role. Uh, somebody actually in the gym mistaken him for Mo Wagner from the back because of how built he is right now. And uh, and he's got a lot more bounce than people think. And he can shoot the you know what out of the ball, man. So this is a kid that uh, I think is going to surprise a lot of people. You're going to see him. Uh, I don't know. He might contribute this year. I, I honestly believe that based on what we've heard. So, and then Frankie Collins, like we said earlier, you know, he's a guy uh, when he, when Xavier Simpson first got here, they were wondering, Hey, are we going to have to recruit another point guard next year? Cause we just aren't sure. And I think they're probably there with Frankie Collins right now. It's so early, man. They've had five workouts, so it's not fair to say that, you know, they're certainly not looking to recruit over him, but he's one of those kids that's going to have to improve his jump shot and really kind of become more assertive. You know, Xavier Simpson wasn't Xavier Simpson until his sophomore year. We saw flashes against Michigan state, but when he emerged, man, he let you know it. And I think that's kind of the, 
projected next step for Frankie Collins. Yeah, deep into Xavier Simpson's freshman year, people were talking. You know, you're right. You saw the flashes. He could run the ball screen, but then it's like, you know, and he'd play good defense. But yeah, he wasn't himself until his sophomore year. You know, they have Frankie Collins there is kind of the point guard of the future. Doug McDaniel in the class behind him, so uh, he will be pushed. You know, when Doug McDaniel gets to campus as well, and, and we'll see how he turns out. Um, you know, and speaking of that, you know, shifting over to recruiting, a big. July here coming up. Peach Jam is what next week or whatever, or two weeks, uh, and then there's all these other tournaments. We'll be at the Elite 32 down in Atlanta. Jet Howard, um, Doug McDaniel, both competing. So it will be uh, it will be interesting to see Doug in person. Seen a lot of clips. Seen a lot of uh, you know. You've talked to him. I've talked to him. Uh, talked to his coach. This is a uh, you know a really good kid that obviously Jawan Howard and that staff wanted to get and wanted to make sure that he committed before he left town on his official visit. Uh, he's on the shorter end of things, but Michigan's had some success with those types of guys. So um, how short is he? I'll be trying to, you know, I'll have my tape measure or whatever. Uh, yeah. You know, trying to get the exact that, That'll go over real well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll probably get kicked out if I do that. Yeah, bring a yardstick and that'll really piss him off. So. Right. Okay. So I may get kicked out, so I may not get to see them. But um, no, so that'll be good to see. Juwan Howard, Phil Martelli hitting the recruiting trail, the rest of the assistants. You've seen kind of these pictures surface where it's Saudi Washington, Howard Isley, Juwan Howard, Phil Martelli. By the way, I love the shirts they've been wearing out there, Michigan culture. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I think those are pretty cool. I know the Heat has the same uh, type of thing. So they're kind of – they're pushing that culture, man, even to these kids. It's like, no, you know, we're not going to make any mistake about it. It's about yeah. the culture here at Michigan. I love that. Uh, I love what these guys are doing. And then – uh you know, so it's going to be interesting to see this 2022 class kind of play out with Doug McDaniel yeah. in the fold now. And I like the, uh, I love those shirts. I, th- those guys, when you see them together, it's like the uh, the dudes from Tombstone, you know, Wyatt Earp and, you know, being Jawan Howard and walking down to the OK Corral, man. It's just a, it's one hell of a staff, you know, and Phil Martelli, I can't say enough good things about the guy. Every time that I talk to a recruit or their parents, obviously they talk about Jawan Howard. Uh, right after that, it's Phil Martelli's my guy, man. I love Phil Martelli. I could listen to his stories forever. And it's the same thing with me, man. I just love listening to him talk. He is an unbelievable guy, and uh, and he's a great recruiter. You know, some of these guys, as they get older, uh, you know, you expect, okay, it's going to wane a little bit, and they're not going to be as active on the recruiting trail. It is the exact opposite for Phil Martelli, who obviously knows how important it is to get talent in here, and he got hit some at St. Joe uh, when he was there as a longtime head coach. So, But I, I love what they've done, what they've accomplished, and, and you know what? There are a couple of guys, too. We know – Two guys that are probably going to end up in this class, right? Doug McDaniel, Jet Howard. If if Jet Howard doesn't come, I'm buying you a steak dinner. Uh, that and Austin Fox, even though he doesn't work here anymore. So, uh, you know, but, I don't. I don't want that steak dinner. <laughs> no, exactly. He's coming. Let's put it that way. I don't think there's any question about it. Then they're going to take a big man, and then that fourth spot. That's where it gets interesting. And they're going to be looking at a couple of guys this week. And we just put up a an ITF extra inside the Ford Extra at the uh, at the Wolverine.com where uh, Nebraska uh, power forward Isaac Trout is one to watch. He's a shooter. Virginia, Michigan State have kind of made a move there, and a lot of people think it's going to be those two teams. Michigan would love to get him on campus and uh, and try to woo him a little bit. Big man Derek Lively. Everybody says, oh, that ship sailed. Michigan's top seven. They're probably the sixth or seventh on that on that list. Guess what? He's from Philly. Phil Martelli is from Philly. Uh, he's not going to go down without a fight. They really want to get him on campus and show him, hey, this is what Jawan Howard can do for you, which, uh, frankly, is what he did for Terrace Reed in talking to his coaches, another four-star. They saw how Jawan Howard was coaching these guys hands-on, and they're like, man, is this real? You know, uh, Does he do this all the time? They thought maybe he was putting on a show for him, and he said, no, man. They, they said, this is what we do. Jawan Howard is here to coach and to be hands-on. And, man, if you can get that kind of training from an NBA guy like Jawan Howard with his experience – uh, that really speaks volumes to what you can get at Michigan compared to some of these other places. Yeah, I was uh, I saw a little Twitter clip of of an interview with Terrace Reed the other day at one of these AAU events, and you know some local place was asking him, hey, "What are you looking for in a college?" And he said he wants to be developed. He wants a coach that he can have a good relationship with, and that will develop big men and get them to the next level. And I was like, it's kind of funny. It's like these guys are almost saying Michigan without saying Michigan. Now I know there's right. other places. I mean, Juwan Howard is a third year coach. There's plenty of established coaches, plenty of established programs out there. But uh, at the same time, Michigan and, and Juwan Howard are, are doing a great job as well. And they're, 
man, these kids that come in on a visit, or if you get a phone call from them, we've talked about it a couple times where these kids, they just want that phone call from Jawan Howard. But it it means a lot to get that from yep. Jawan Howard, from <laughs> Phil Martelli. You speak of Phil Martelli, you're right. Like You would assume maybe, okay, Phil Martelli's a guy, he, he knows the X's and O's, he knows how to run a program. It's great to have that you know, for a young head coach, but Phil Martelli was a good recruiter at St. Joe's. It's just St. Joe's. He can't get all the guys that he wants. Uh, He recruited Adrian Nunez the hardest out of anyone. So he was, he knew what to do. It's just the fact that he couldn't get that pull. Now he's at Michigan. So I think that makes a difference. Don't, don't sleep on him. I'd say don't sleep on Saudi Washington has always been a great recruiter. And and guys talk about uh, Howard Isley as well. Doug McDaniel uh, had a great relationship with him. And then the last thing for me on, on the Phil Martelli recruiting, the inspirational text that he sends these guys each morning that you hear about too. Uh, yeah. I mean, just a class act. Yeah. The Godfather. Right. And I was going to, you beat me to Washington and Isley, man, these guys are picking it up. Washington doesn't have to pick it up because he's been one of the best recruiters forever. Going back to Oakland, uh, just a personable guy, another guy that I could talk to forever. When you talk to him, uh, it's like you're talking to an old friend, you know, and uh, class act. Howard doesn't like to talk as much. And that was an area that he had to get, used to not Jawan Howard, Howard Isley. And that's something that he is getting used to. And more and more kids are kind of finding out who he is. Uh, Doug McDaniel on his visit, you know, Howard Isley really did a nice job there. And uh, they had a pretty good idea that Doug McDaniel was probably going to pledge on his visit, especially when Seth Trimble left without committing, went to North Carolina, committed there, obviously. But uh, Jawan Howard has always loved Doug McDaniel. Uh, He's uh, getting better as a shooter. Uh, Like you said, I'm going to be interested to see how tall he is. But the the bond that these kids are are forming with the assistant coaches, and then when they get here and they find out that it's real and nothing's fabricated, and that's something that Martelli and Saudi Washington and Howard and Jawan Howard have all said, you know, the boss – is as down to earth as it gets, Jawan Howard. Uh, and then, you know, it kind of goes right down to everybody else. And uh, they are all they all feel like they're equals, and they all respect each other's opinions. So love the staff, love what they're doing. Can't believe it when you said third-year coach Jawan Howard. Man, where's the time go? It seems like yesterday that we were seeing him and uh, a young Jet and Jace Howard there at the introductory press conference. But time flies, man. I will say this, though. Uh, the program seems to be headed in the right direction. I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah, things change in a hurry, and next thing you know, it's third-year head coach Jawan Howard. Third-year associate head coach Phil Martelli at Michigan. I mean, who would have thought that, that was going to happen? You never thought he'd leave St. Joe's in the first place. Right. That was kind of, I think, a mistake on their part for even letting him go. Yeah. But here we are. Michigan is better for it. Uh, anything else on basketball? Basketball recruiting uh, for this week. It'll be, uh, you know, this July period with coaches finally being able, uh, you know, and you saw it a little bit in June, but to evaluate these guys in person, they're continuing to host some of these guys on visits. We mentioned Terrace Reed. So things are going to play out, and I wouldn't be shocked if we get a couple more guys in this class before the start of the season. Yeah, I think that's probably true. And uh, it really just kind of depends on when some of these guys want to commit. And uh, Isaac Trout, for example, said that he wants to commit before his senior year. That could be, you know, anywhere deep into the fall. So, uh, and for some of these other guys, Terrace Reed, and speaking to his people, they said they want to wrap it up pretty quickly. And guess what? Michigan had the last visit, and uh, and it went extremely well. So I think Michigan really made a move there. Now, there are no guarantees, as we've seen. You know, we thought Seth Trimble – when he said, God, you know, I was waiting for that Michigan offer. We thought, and they thought, I'll be honest, that he could pop on his visit and that, okay, uh, they're going to land him, but didn't happen. So it's recruiting, man. Things change. Uh, you know that, but they're in a good spot. They can be choosy. And, you know, you don't have to get five stars, four or five stars in every class. And that's what everybody's saying. Oh, it's disappointing that they're not going to get this guy, this guy, or this guy. And the disappointment is that you're getting the number 70 player in the country and then maybe the number 90 player in the country and that these guys are going to come in. And you don't know how long these five stars, you don't know how long Caleb Houston's going to be in the Michigan program. He could be a one and done. So you've got to get guys here, too, that are going to play and uh, that, you know, that are going to be playing down the road that are going to stay and play, you know, when some of these other guys leave. So. Um, there's plenty of room. Let's put it that way. Uh, they've been selling that to these kids that, hey, man, uh, you know, it's wide open. We don't care if you were a, a five star, if you're a three star, look at Will Cheddar, right? Uh, you're going to have an opportunity when you get here. And that's what uh, I love about this program. You're building a roster, not a recruiting class. You're not star chasing. You know, you're trying to build a five star yep. team. All the cliches are true. And we've seen it work at Michigan. And I think that's kind of, well, uh, 
it, it's great to see uh, for a lot of people that I talk to, Michigan fans and whatever, that Jawan Howard is continuing kind of what has been built here. This is a great foundation. They're continuing to build on it. Uh, continue to follow all of it at thewolverine.com. Use the promo code BLUE60. You get two months of our premium content absolutely free. Chris teased a couple of his uh, articles there, insider updates. You can get all of those instantly using the promo code BLUE60 if you're not already with us. So go and do that right now, and we'll see everybody over there.